It occurs to me that for this project, we're going to have to spend an awful lot of time in France. And I thought, as long as we're in France, let's go to the Moulin Rouge. And I'm sure you'll agree there is no one better to show us around than Toulouse-Lautrec. So, who should we talk about? How about the literal poster child of the Moulin Rouge? This is Jane Avril. The original Moulin Rouge was established in 1889 and was a huge success until it burnt down in 1914. The birthplace of the Can Can with its signature windmill, the Moulin Rouge was a place where courtesans did their business, artists found their inspiration, and the champagne was always flowing. And no one was more adept at capturing the Moulin Rouge than the artist Henri Toulouse-Lautrec, and he liked to paint one woman in particular again and again. Toulouse Lautrec's paintings are examples of post-impressionism. So he's keeping company with Vincent van Gogh, Gauguin, and Cezanne. Post-impressionism is an extension of impressionism, but rejects its stringent use of realistic colors in subjects. Think of your favorite impressionist. It's probably this guy, right? No shade, Monet is my favorite favorite. But the post-impressionists like Toulouse-Lautrec wanted to use color and they believed in distorting reality by use of geometric forms. But back to Jane Avril, the woman who Toulouse-Lautrec painted again and again and again. I assume you've all seen the movie Moulin Rouge. You know Nicole Kidman's character? That's Jane Avril. She was the star of the Moulin Rouge. Jane's father was an Italian aristocrat and her mother was a prostitute. Dad left when she was only two and Jane lived with her grandparents until her mother took her back with the intention of making her a prostitute as well. But as a teenager, Jane ran away from home and in a big twist was admitted to a hospital in 1882 with a movement disorder called St. Vitus's Dance, which caused her to have nervous jerking tics. So Jane, whose name was actually Jean Louise Buden, Jane Avril was a stage name suggested to her later by an English lover. Anyway, Jane left the hospital after a failed romance with a doctor and thought about committing suicide, but was instead taken in by Parisian prostitutes. <sighs> Paris. So with a string of lovers who helped Jane out, she was soon pursuing a career dancing around Paris. She was known for eccentric movements that may or may not have been related to her disease. Regardless, it earned her some pretty great nicknames. L'Autrange, meaning the strange one and Jane La Folle, meaning Crazy Jane. So she starts dancing for the Moulin Rouge when it opens in 1889, and soon after is considered the most famous dancer in all of Paris. During this time, Jane became good friends with Toulouse-Lautrec, and we're lucky she did because he painted her everywhere. He painted her on posters for the Moulin Rouge. He painted her checking a print sample of the poster he had painted her on for the Moulin Rouge. He painted her dancing at the Moulin Rouge. He even painted her walking out of the Moulin Rouge. After the days at the Moulin Rouge were done, because remember the original burnt down in 1914, Jane did marry a German artist, but apparently it was a very unhappy marriage. He would be gone for days at a time. And when he died in 1926, he left her in abject poverty for many years. Eventually she died at a senior's home in 1943 at the age of 75. That's 42 years after the death of Toulouse-Lautrec. But until his death, Jane had remained a close and loyal friend, and Lautrec left us with the memory of Jane, the sparkling dancer of the Moulin Rouge, and Jane, the human. <laughs>